Hi and welcome to John's Maths Book. In this video, we'll be exploring another key concept in mathematics. If you find this tutorial helpful, then please show your support by subscribing, liking and leaving a comment. Your positive engagement helps me create more content and allows me to bring you more valuable maths lessons. Without further ado, let's go over to the whiteboard. In this exercise, I'm going to be showing you how to calculate the area between a circle and a parabola using double integration and polar coordinates. I'll demonstrate how to define the region in terms of integrals, and if you stick around until the end, I'll show you how to evaluate the integrals. We have a circle with a parabola passing through it, creating an area of intersection shown here on the diagram. We are tasked with finding the area of intersection shown in red using double integrals and polar coordinates. The equation of the circle and the parabola are shown in Cartesian coordinates. The circle has a radius of 1 and is centered at x equals 1 and y equals 0. Its equation is x squared plus y squared is equal to 2x. The parabola has an equation of y equals x squared. The first step in finding the area is to convert the equations of the circle and the parabola from Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates. To do this, we'll substitute our cos theta for x and our sine theta for y. The circle in Cartesian coordinates is x squared plus y squared is equal to 2x. Making the substitution for x and y, we have r squared into the bracket of cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 2r cos theta. Using the trig identity, where cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1, we're left with r squared is equal to 2r cos theta. And dividing both sides of the equation by r, we're left with r is equal to 2 cos theta. And for the parabola in Cartesian coordinates, we have y equals x squared. Making the substitution for x and y, we have r sine theta is equal to r squared cos squared theta. And dividing both sides of the equation by r, and cos squared theta leaves r equals sine theta divided by cos squared theta. Now that we've found the radial distance r for the circle and parabola, let's look at the behavior of r as we use it to compute the region shown in red. As r rotates in a counterclockwise direction between theta equals 0 and theta equals pi by 2, where theta is the angle r makes with the x-axis, the radial distance covering the area, shown in red, is first determined by the parabola. This continues until the parabola intersects with the circle at some unknown angle of theta, at which point the area is determined by the circle until the area is complete at theta equals pi by 2. To find the angle of theta where the parabola intersects with the circle, we can equate the polar equations. The two polar equations are r equals 2 cos theta and r equals sine theta divided by cos squared theta. Equating the two, we have 2 cos theta is equal to sine theta divided by cos squared theta. And dividing both sides of the equation by cos theta, we have 2 equals sine theta divided by cos cubed theta. Using the trig identity, where sine theta divided by cos theta is equal to tan theta, we're left with 2 equals tan theta divided by cos squared theta. And 1 over cos squared theta is equal to sec squared theta. So we now have 2 equals tan theta sec squared theta. If we use the trig identity where sec squared theta is equal to 1 plus tan squared theta, we have 2 equals tan theta plus tan cubed theta. And this equation is satisfied when tan theta is equal to 1. And therefore the circle and the parabola intersect where theta equals pi by 4 radians. We are now in a position to start defining the limits of integration as r rotates about theta, which will form the outer integrals. The area of our region of intersection r can be defined as the double integral over the region r 
where we sum infinitesimally small pieces of area shown as dA. In this case, the region, as we saw, was represented by two sectors, each being a double integral. In the first sector, theta started at zero and continued to where theta was equal to pi by four radians. These form the limits of integration of the outer integral of our first double integral. We then saw that the second sector began where theta is equal to pi by four radians and continued to where theta equals pi by two radians. These form in the limits of integration of the outer integral of our second double integral. Now let's look at what happens when we sum infinitesimally small pieces of area along the radial distance or in the r direction. This will help us define the inner integrals. When we integrate in the r direction, this will represent the inner of the two integrals. This diagram represents a sector of the region capital R. The angle it makes is infinitesimally small and is denoted by d theta. Within the sector, we have infinitesimally small pieces of area denoted by dA. The size of each area is the length multiplied by the width. So in this case, dr is the length and r d theta the width. So dA is equal to r dr d theta. To find the total area of the sector, we integrate or sum in the r direction. When we sum or integrate along the radial distance r, we begin at the origin, so where r is equal to zero, and continue until the parabola intersects with the circle, so where r equals sine theta divided by cos squared theta, and these form the limits of integration of the first of our inner integrals. We then continue from the origin, so where r is equal to zero, until we reach the perimeter of the circle, so where r is equal to 2 cos theta, and these form the limits of integration of the second of our inner integrals. And in each of the double integrals, we are summing infinitesimally small pieces of area dA, which translates to r dr d theta. We can now begin to evaluate the inner integrals. The first of these is the integral from r equals 0 to r equals sine theta divided by cos squared theta of r dr. The antiderivative of this is r squared divided by 2. And if we plug in the limits of integration, we have sine squared theta divided by 2 cos to the power of 4 theta minus 0. And this equals sine squared theta divided by 2 cos to the power of 4 theta. For the second of our inner integrals, we need to integrate between r equals 0 and r equals 2 cos theta r dr. The antiderivative of this is r squared divided by 2, and plugging in the limits of integration gives 2 cos squared theta minus 0, which is equal to 2 cos squared theta. Now we can begin to evaluate the outer integrals. The first of these is the integral from theta equals 0, to theta equals pi by 4 radians of sine squared theta divided by 2 cos to the power of 4 theta d theta. The antiderivative of this is tan cubed theta divided by 6 and plugging in the limits of integration we have 1 sixth minus 0 which is equal to 1 sixth. And for the second and last of the outer integrals we need to integrate between theta equals pi by 4 and theta equals pi by 2 of 2 cos squared theta d theta. The antiderivative of this is theta plus sine 2 theta divided by 2. If you'd like more information on how I evaluated the integral of cos squared theta d theta, then please see this video. If we now plug in the limits of integration for this, we have pi by 2 plus 0 minus into the bracket of pi by 4 plus a half, and this equals pi by 4 minus 1 half. Now that we've evaluated the double integrals, that's all that remains to be done is to sum its constituent parts. So we have 1 sixth plus pi by 4 minus 1 half. And this gives pi by 4 minus a third, which is our final answer. Mm -hmm.